Hi there. So for today's video lesson, we're going to be creating a nine scale complementary color chart. Uh, the color chart is going to consist of yellow and purple, nine different swatches in a uh, clean gradient. Um, this is probably what the end product should look like. And first off, the supplies that we'll need are water for our acrylic. I'm using acrylic today instead of gouache for the sake of the demonstration, and I don't have any gouache on me. Um, the, two, the two colors are purple and yellow. Obviously, the purest ones that I can find are cadmium yellow and uh, a Visteria, and these are Liquitex brand, but basically the most pure that you can find. Um, the brush that I chose to use is a number eight flat acrylic brush and of course we need a palette to mix our paint on and I have Bristol paper right here mounted onto a board for the sake of demonstration. So when you have a chance to gather those supplies we'll start uh, with our first swatches. So hopefully now that you have the supplies we can start mixing our paint. What I'd like you to do now is to put yellow and purple opposite of that of each other onto the palette like so. First I'd like to start off with the yellow. Right now it's at a pretty nice consistency, pretty buttery. Um, I might go a little bit thinner. So I'd like to load up my brush. And up here we'll just start off on the top uh, left hand side. What we want to do is get a flat consistency. What I'm going for is probably about an inch, inch and a half squares. What I want the paint to do is just lay down really flatly and smoothly so that way the paint is a nice even color throughout the whole paper. I don't want it looking streaky or too much texture. What I'm looking for is just the purest example of its color. Now what I'm going to do is uh, clean off my brush because I want the paint to be as pure as possible. So I'd like to mix it around in the water really well. What I'll do now is just wring it out really well. And what you want to do is wring the brush back and forth, flexing the bristles back be to get the paint out of the brush. So if you follow along with me, we can do this. The next thing I'm going to do is to use the purple now. And the purple is a little bit thicker consistency, so I'll get that a little wet too. Mind you, of course, you'll need to change your water frequently because the water will get color in it and dilute it and dilute your paint. So what I want is to get a pure swatch of purple. So I'll clean my brush. Since you're following along, <coughs> since you're following along with me, uh, it may take a little bit of time. So feel free to pause at any moment to catch up, or uh, you know, just rinse your water or anything like that. The purpose of this is to make sure that we have like the purest, cleanest possible colors. Well, what I'm going to do now is uh, what we're going to shoot for is the middle bracket here, the number five. So say this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine being purple, one being yellow. So five would be the closest to brown that we can get mixing the two. And this is going to take quite a few times. What we're doing here is just mixing our swatches. And what we will later do is cut them out into different pieces and lay them bit by bit to get the greatest uh, transition of color and just make sure that it's the smoothest. So don't focus too much about being totally perfect. Know what you have intended. So I'll start off mixing a little bit of purple and yellow together. Right now there's a little bit too much purple. I mean actually too much yellow, I'm sorry. And what I want to do is get a little bit more purple 
Now that's looking a little too purple. You just want to do like little small dabs just to mix the color right. A little too much. A little dab of purple. I feel like that looks about even for now. So we can see and go up back up to the canvas. I'm going to paint it near the middle. And as you'll see, when you mix the brown, the yellow is such a light value is that it will probably look closer to purple. And for example, here, the value doesn't really start shifting until we get away from the middle ground and shift towards purple. I mean, towards yellow, I'm sorry. And it remains dark because there's such a value contrast. So here, I think this looks all right. Well, I'll just keep experimenting a little here and there. What I'd like you to do is the same as just mix up your swatches trying to get, say, the number five value. You can put it next to each other. There'll be really subtle differences that you can see. So this may take a while, 20 to 20 minutes or so, overall to get all the swatches together. Because what we're going to be doing is trying to mix each one. And the way I'm doing it is, since it's odd numbers, we can jump to the middle one in between. So say when I get the yellow 1 to 5, which is the middle, and between those two, I want to find number 3. So 1, 2, 3. So what I'm going to try to do is mix a color that is between here and here, and that gives me a good chance to see what's between here and here. And when I do those next to each other, you... I like to literally paint the swatches kind of side by side, so that way the white in between doesn't obscure my vision and gives me the greatest uh, balance of relation. So you can even mix it on your palette right here from the colors that you just mixed. You just add a little more yellow to it. A little more purple. Might need a little more water too. The acrylic dries fairly quickly, so be aware of that. And a little more yellow. Oop, a lot more yellow. So we can go back up here, see how that looks in between. I don't think it looks too bad, but I feel like I need to do more transition color. I feel like this is a little too dark and close to this in comparison to the yellow. So what I need to do is add more yellow. Like we've been doing. And try various swatches like so. Wash my brush again. If you're following along with me, you'll realize how uh, painstaking this can get after a while or if you've been through color and design. So the overall goal right now is to mix the swatches and get as many uh, gradients as you can between the two and just, you know, have a little fun experimenting and getting variations on the color between purple and yellow. 
what we're eventually going to do is cut these swatches out and lay them bit by bit until we can get a smooth gradient. So what you're going to be comparing is say 5 to 9 to uh, yellow. Alrighty. So now that we have our a few swatches, what I'd like to do is try to find our middle purple that we were trying to mix. So we have our pure purple over here in the corner. I'm going to cut out. What I want to do is make sure that there's no white on them. Just pure purple. And likewise with the yellow. I like to lay them side by side, like so, on the paper. And I like to put it on a gray paper just because the gray is a neutral color and allows my eyes to evenly see the distinction between like value between like darker, lighter, and a mid-tone. What I'd like to do is cut out all these swatches. So, so I'd like you to cut out all your swatches and follow back with me in a moment. 